Hello, David here, and welcome to this tutorial, where you will learn how to do palletizing using robot programming in visual components. This tutorial is the third part of a three part series, and the downloadable layout was created in the previous tutorial. When following any tutorial, check the lesson on the Visual Components Academy, and if the Download Files option appears, you can download the example files. In this tutorial, we are going to continue building the conveyor line and create a robot palletizing program. In this line, the feeder will create the products to the conveyor and the conveyor sensor will detect the products. Then the robot will pick the products one by one and place them onto the pallet in a pattern. OK, let's begin. So from the Home tab and from the eCatalog, first let's select all the components we need for the final layout. So in Models by Manufacturer, then Visual Components and Conveyors, select a normal conveyor. We're going to need two of these, so let's duplicate it using Ctrl C and Ctrl V. And we can connect these to both sides of the output conveyor. And from Conveyor Utilities, add a conveyor sensor, which can be connected to the center of the conveyor. And finally, from feeders, add a pallet feeder. This can be connected to the first conveyor on the output side. And check that the correct interface is connected for the pallet. Now let's fine tune the width of this pallet line. So holding the control key, click to multi select all the conveyors and the conveyor sensor. And from the component properties, set the conveyor width to be 900. So the line is the same width as the pallet. Then holding control, add the pallet feeder to the selection. And fine tune the position of the setup in relation to the position of the robot. Next we can connect the signals. So open the signals tool from the ribbon above and select the robot. And we are interested in the conveyor power on signal and the conveyor sensor. So let's first connect to the robot input side the conveyor sensor. Connect the sensor Boolean signal to the input side of the robot and set the input port to 200. And then connect the conveyor to power on signal to the robot output side and port 200 as well. Now we have all the necessary signals connected, so we can close the Signals tool. And to program the robot, we can move to the Program tab. And with the robot selected, select the Jog tool, and in the Jog panel, let's define the base for the pallet side. So from the base list, Base 1 can be used for the box feeding side, and Base 2 is used for the pallet side, and click the gear icon to edit the base properties. And selecting the snap tool from the ribbon, we will snap the base to the origin of the conveyor sensor. So select the snap type to be origin, and select the conveyor sensor. And set the node to be the conveyor sensor. So when the sensor is moved, the frame is moved as well. And when the node has been selected correctly, Conveyor Sensor 2 will appear as the selected node. Then we can close the Base Properties panel. Then let's create a program for getting a new palette. So from the Sub Programs panel, click to add a new sequence for the robot and call it Weight Palette. And here we need to run the conveyor with outputs and wait for the sensor input signal and stop the conveyor. 
So inside the weight palette program, let's add a set binary output statement and set the output port to be 200. And select the output value, setting it to true, which will power on the conveyor. Then let's add a wait for binary input statement. And here we need to wait for the conveyor sensor to detect the pallet on input port 200 and select input value, setting it to true. And when we want to have a new pallet using the same program, we need to activate the wait trigger value. And when we detect a new pallet, we need to stop the conveyor. So let's add another set binary output statement, set the output port to be 200 as well, and deselecting the output value sets it to false. And now we can run a test. So let's go to the main program and delete the old while loop and create two call sequence statements, one for the wait box and another for the wait palette sequence. And now we can run the simulation and see what happens. So we get the box and the conveyor stops. And then we get the pallet and the conveyor stops. And now we can see that the pallet feeder keeps feeding pallets. So let's fix that. So resetting the simulation and selecting the first conveyor in the advanced properties tab, set the conveyor capacity to one. So the pallet feeder will feed just one pallet to the conveyor. And next we need to modify the put box program where we will be placing boxes on top of the pallet. Selecting the put box program, we first need to remove the old motion statements. And run the simulation to the point where we have a box and a pallet available. And also we need the box picked as well. So in the main subprogram, let's add call sequence statements for weight box, weight pallet, and a third sequence call for the get box routine. Then run the simulation. And now we can stop the simulation and go to the put box program and select the jog tool. If we already have a front position motion statement available, we can use that. And in the jog panel, let's redefine the base to be base 2 and the tool to be gripper TCP. And now we would like to snap the box next to the pallet. However, the pallet is still partly on top of the first conveyor. So we need to fix that by moving the conveyor sensor. So the pallet will stop a bit later. Let's first reset the simulation and in the home tab, select the conveyor sensor and using the move tool, adjust its position. And if we now run the simulation, the pallet should travel a bit further along the conveyor like so. And now stopping the simulation and returning to the program tab and the put box sub program and clicking on the motion statement to move the robot to the front position in the jog panel again, define the base as base two and tool to gripper TCP and to snap the box. Next to the pallet, select the align tool from the ribbon. Set the snap type to edge and face and select the edge of the box and align it with the top surface of the pallet. And we can snap the corner of the box to the corner of the pallet, which is the desired placing position for the box. Now we can save this position by adding a linear motion statement. And then we can create the approach positions. So let's jog the box a bit upwards and save this as an approach position by adding one linear motion statement and then another. So it appears twice in the program and then move the second position 
before the placing position. And also, the output statement for releasing the gripper, let's place that after the placing position. And then we have this old front position. We can copy that using Ctrl C and Ctrl V and move the copy to the end of the program. So now when the jog tool is active, if we click through the motion statements, we can see the robot move to those positions. Next, we can reset the simulation and test the program. Go to the main sub program and add another call sequence statement to call one more sub program and let's have the put box routine and run the simulation. And one box should be placed on the pallet. Nice. Then we need to create the main logic for the main program so the robot can repeat this box placement action multiple times, so we can palletize the whole pallet. So then resetting the simulation, let's go to the main program, and next we would like to have counters. So from the routine properties of the main program, we can add different variables. So let's select integer variable, and we will add an x counter that we repeat in the x direction in the palette. Then add another integer variable for a y counter and another for a z counter. All right, so we want to repeat this whole sequence in the main program. So for now, let's remove the calls for the get box and put box programs as those will be called later. We can start the sequence for getting a new box and waiting for a pallet. And we want this whole sequence to loop. So let's add a while loop statement and holding the control key, click to multi select both call sequence statements and move them inside the while loop. And each time a new pallet is arriving, we want to reset the base that is used with the pallet. So selecting the call wait pallet, Add a define base statement below it and select base 2, and this will reset the values after the offsets. Next, we need loops for each counter. So we need to have an X loop, Z loop, and Y loop, and then they need to be inside of each other. So let's first add three while loop statements. So we have one loop, and we drag the second loop inside the first loop and the third loop inside the second loop. Then selecting the first loop inside the loops we can apply conditions and this first loop we want to be the Z counter which we will loop as long as it's less than two. So now we get two layers of boxes on the pallet and the second loop will be in the Y direction. So the condition will be Y counter less than two as well. So then we have two columns of boxes. And for the last loop, the condition will be X counter less than three. So we have three rows of boxes. And then these counters need to be reset. So we can reset this counter before each loop, which we can do by assigning a variable. So click to add an assign variable statement and this one can be X counter, and then it equals zero. So this will reset the counter. And this variable statement can be placed before the X counter loop. And copy it using Control C and Control V. And place a copy before the Y counter. And create another copy and place it before the Z counter. And we remember to rename the copies, so Z counter equals zero. And then we have Y counter equals zero. We also need to increment these, so that at the end of each round, the counter will be incremented by one. So let's use the same assign counter statement. So we will place a copy 
of the y counter variable statement inside the x counter loop, where we will want to have x counter equals x counter plus 1. And we will copy this counter statement and add it to each loop. So in the y counter loop, we are going to increment the y counter. And inside the z counter, we are going to increment the z counter. Then inside each loop, we need to offset the bases. So the base 2, which is used for palletizing. So we need to have a set base statement inside of each loop. And let's add these before the counter increments. So let's place 1 for setting the z offset and create a copy for setting the y offset and another for setting the x offset. And in the x loop, let's select the base 2 first and then we need to select this is relative, which will offset the value relative to its previous value. So in the x loop, we want to offset the base in the x direction. And the box width, which is 350 millimeters, we want to offset the base location by 350 millimeters. And then for the set base inside the Y loop, set base 2 again and select is relative. But inside the Y offsetting, we need to reset the X offset. So when we have 3 times the X offset, there needs to be 3 times minus the box width. And then we need to offset once, in the y direction, the box width of 350 millimeters. And the same logic applies to the set base in the z loop. Set base 2, select is relative, and the box height is 250 millimeters. But this z offset set base statement needs to zero out the y offset value. So two times minus 350 millimeters, so twice the width of the box. OK, then we need to actually call the getBox and putBox subprograms, which happens inside the X loop. So we click to add two call sequence statements, which need to be happening before we offset the base. So we will drag the set base statement below these two statements. And the first sequence call is going to be the get box. And the second one needs to be the put box. And then let's test it out by running the simulation. Then stopping and resetting the simulation and selecting the main program inside the X loop we need to call the wait box program at the beginning of these sequence calls. So we add another call sequence statement for the wait box program and place it above the get box sequence. So we will first get a new box in front of the conveyor sensor and then we get the box and put the box to the pallet and then running the simulation we get the box and put it on the pallet, and we get a new box. And we can speed the simulation up a little. And when the pallet is full, the pallet is sent away, and the new pallet starts the palletizing process. Okay, so this concludes the lesson. Thank you for watching.